Today it's old versus new, Gibson versus Taylor, uh, J45 versus 517 for round shoulder mahogany supremacy. Stay tuned. Hey, you're watching Alamo Music TV. My name is Chris McKee. And I'm Cooper Greenberg. And we're here with Alamo Music Center in San Antonio, Texas. You can find us online at alamomusic.com. If you're new to the channel, subscribe, turn on notifications, like our videos. If you would like to uh, support us, visit our spring store for custom swag and check out our podcast at Fretboard Confessional, wherever you get your podcast. So why are we pointing today? Just we're the Pointer Brothers. Hey, you know what I'm okay. Better than the sisters. So, you know, not that there's anything wrong with that. So today we are looking at two round shoulder dreadnoughts uh, from the OG Gibson with the J45 in ebony. This is the 50s model. And we're comparing it to Taylor's upstart new kid on the block, the 517E, uh, Builder's Edition 517E in wild honey burst finish. So that's available in a sunburst or red. Right? Is it the 50s that's in red? Or the I think it's a standard. Red? And then this is available either like this, the Wild Honey Burst, or in a natural finish. Both are mahogany, round shoulder dreadnoughts. Uh, and then there's a lot different basically from there. Yeah, I think calling this guy the, the new kid on the block, you know, it's been around. It's like when Ben Simmons won Rookie it's, of the Year it's the when new he'd kid already on be the in the league <laughs> for a little bit. Yeah. But I mean, Okay, what's what's the it's it's new key on the block as far as round shoulder dreadnoughts go. Yeah, it's like there's this new show Seinfeld. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, yeah, that is relatively new. We uh, have enjoyed it quite a bit, mm -hmm. and this video came about because it's almost like this would be the no-brainer when this did come out, but we have never done it. We have never done this, and I, I actually was like, can we double check? Yeah. But what has been the issue is we've never had. Both of these in stock at the same time. Whose fault is that? Gibson's. Yeah. I mean, that's true. It's just, that's, that's, that's true. Uh, so we've had plenty of these. We've sold lots of these. These have been, uh, I say, a home run for Taylor since Andy Powers designed them and they introduced them, uh, which was a treat for me. That was a cool trip to Nashville to figure out what these were all about. Um, and obviously, there's, there's some design reminiscence here. I think there's some inspiration. And, you know, for Taylor's part, a, a desire to, like, take what they saw as maybe some inadequacies adequacies from a vintage design yeah. and fix them for a modern player. Doesn't mean that those things on a vintage design are wrong. I think from a recording standpoint, there's some reasons they did that, which we could talk about. But I love a J45, you know. Yeah. Um, and we the have workhorse. Been, we, they, it is a workhorse, um, and it has been out of stock for far too long. Yeah. Um, so I'm glad to see that we have one in stock. In fact, when we talked about doing this video, there are two questions. Are you sure we've never done this video? Because we've long wanted to. And two, are you sure we actually do have a J45 yeah. in stock? So you may have, you may say, like Chris did, I'm pretty sure you've done this before. Um, 717 versus J45, Deluxe. Rosewood. Yeah, so there is a 717, 700 series, would typically people be like, oh yeah, that's Spruce and Rosewood. Not so much the case anymore. Nope. However, the 717E is still available, still Spruce and Rosewood. Mm -hmm. um, 517E, Mahogany, and then J45, not a deluxe, Spruce and Mahogany. Um, and we've already had some good Spruce and Mahogany action today. Yep. But tell me, this is on the spot preference. Do you like a square shoulder or round shoulder dreadnought more? Square, square shoulder or round shoulder dreadnought more. Yes. Classic answer from Chris. <laughs> it depends. Yeah. Okay, so... Um, oh, so for Spruce and Mahogany, which do you like? <sighs> Say it now. Um, no, it uh, depends upon what I'm playing. So, generally speaking, if it's like flat pick stuff, I prefer like a D18. Yeah. Like the D18 we just played, which is a di different video, which is why you should subscribe to that channel. Because that guitar is insane. Yeah. Um, I would take, I would take that guitar over any of these guitars. See, that's a nice little teaser. Go check out the other. I video. would. I would take that guitar. Period. I yeah. don't care if it was slope shoulder, round shoulder, yeah, square shoulder, yeah. triangular shoulder. I would take that guitar. Um, but you know, I think you know, if I'm playing like the thing with a with a round shoulder guitar, like these two is, 
You can flat pick them. They do great at that. I've tended to, the sound that I get out of it is a little bit more in a nuanced way, a little kind of thuddier. Mm -hmm. And so I like it for like bluesy, slower stuff. That's why I like, that's why I like about a J45. Um, and so I would prefer it for that. Yeah. Uh, drop D, that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, whereas on a square shoulder, I tend to. You want that pop. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, these are, I mean, it's interesting. They don't sound Good too question, alike. Yeah, it's, it's. And you? Yeah, dude. Um, <laughs> the answer is yes. So <laughs> Which guitar do you prefer? Yeah. Yes. Um, All I've, of them. I've long wanted a J45, and I typically, if I was just coming at this video as an audience member, I'd be like, oh, yeah, J45 is going to win. I'm not so sure. I think that the Grand Pacific stuff has really grown on me. I liked it at the beginning, but now it's like, you know, it's it's a special guitar, and there's a reason why a ton of people really dig them, you know? So I think what's happening with you is what's been happening with me, and this is representative of s some of our uh, our viewing public. Um, I have long wanted a Builder's Edition 517E. When they yeah. first came out, we got one. It didn't have a strap button because it was such an early prototype, and yeah. I really wanted to take it home. It didn't have electronics or anything. Um, but I, I didn't, and... You know, over the, the since these have come out in the last few years, I have continued to want this guitar. Okay, but I also want a J45. Yeah. And I I want a J45 because I want a J45. I really like yeah J45s. I want to burst, um, and I want to own a J45. And and if you ask me which one would you get instead, I actually almost justify. It. I'm like, well, you know, I have a bunch of Taylors. You know, I should get a J45 instead. Yeah. Isn't that funny? Well, so we've learned on this channel recently that you can justify <laughs> you anything. Can just, I, can justify, I can justify war, depending Classic. on what war it is. Classic, yeah. <laughs> but, That's an old reference over there. Yeah. But, but no, it's, it's, it's one of those things that I think, you know, we've talked about it. People go like, well, you know, what's your dream guitar? D28. Why? Because I want to own a D28. My pappy played one. Exactly. Yeah. There's something about the J45 that occupies that space, right? It's such a quintessential classic guitar. And I really want to own one. Yeah. You know, and I, I have certain preferences and, and all of that stuff, but I, I do want one. And then that gets challenged with a guitar like this. Yeah. Because then I'm like, oh, well, what is it that I want? Yeah. You know, I, ideally both. And they bring different things to the table. So it's a struggle. Let's talk about what, what they do bring to the table. Yeah. So the thing is, this is classic and as bare bones I think as it really gets yeah. from an acoustic guitar spruce top mahogany back and sides as we've talked about round shoulder or slope shoulder dreadnought x braced um, and I mentioned that because because this one's not that one's not <laughs> um, and you know it's I think I prefer the burst version but this is this is great either way I like the large style 50s pig guard because this is from the original collection mm -hmm. not the modern collection um, and then what do we got? Rosewood and Rosewood over yep. here, and some vintage style tuners, and that's pretty much what you get. And it's they both come with a hard case, obviously, but classic. Yeah, both come with a hard case. This has a cooler it, hard case. It's got the Western tooled leather, which you really only get from a couple different guitars. You Grand get it from Grand Pacific. No, it's all Grand Pacifics. Isn't Grand it? Pacifics yeah. um, and the 18s. 18s. 618, 818. Which it's just. It's probably the coolest case that they have, but so, I mean, you're not buying <clears> it for the case, but still. You can clearly see the inspiration, right? So Taylor had a Dreadnought in their lineup for years. It was one of the earliest designs that Bob Taylor kind of inherited when he started building guitars. And then a few years ago, uh, they discontinued them in the American lineup mm -hmm. um, and instead came out with this Grand Pacific round shoulder Dreadnought body shape. Uh, I remember when they introduced these, they struggled with the name. Um, and he was like, Can't, we sh GP could just stand for general purpose. <laughs> it's the general purpose guitar. Uh, but they've expanded this to include their American Dream mm -hmm. line of guitars. It's still only in the American line. I don't know of any plans to Yeah, that's do a good point because the American Dream GPs don't have the Western tooled leather case. Yeah. Just a side note. Yeah. Um, but, you know, it's a very similar formula here. So U.S. built, all solid wood construction. It's spruce and mahogany. It's... Torified spruce in this particular case. It does not have X bracing. This is the V class bracing um, that you know we learned 
was actually prototyped on this body. It first came out in the Grand Auditoriums years ago when Taylor introduced it, but this is where all that work was done. And the sound for this was just different than what Taylor, Taylor is typically known for. They're typically known for this bright, articulate uh, sound, and this really kind of took that tone and softened it. Uh, it's not as soft sounding on the, the kind of leading edge of the note as a Gibson, um, so it's kind of striking that balance there. Yeah. And then there's other work that they did. So one of the things I talked about of trying to make this for the modern player was to deal with the woofiness that a big body dreadnought typically has, which is great when you're playing in your living room and not so great when you're in the recording studio, you're trying to play in front of a microphone. Uh, it deals with all sorts of issues. And so this gives you the volume and it gives you the tone without giving you that kind of puff of air that can be difficult to EQ out or, or deal with in the studio. Yeah. And it plays great, you know, like pretty much most tailors do. It's got a pickup system or not. This has the ES2 pickup system. It can be opted without. Uh, very occasionally, we actually, this is one of those tailors that we will carry without a pickup system. Um, in it. And it's got a very cool satin, uh, the silent satin finish. You know, so dish. it's, it's yeah. very nice feeling. It's not super glossed. And it's got this kind of worn in wild honey burst, which is great. So just an awesome yeah. kind of Americana aesthetic, great playability and sound. And so, you know, between these two guitars, you really, I mean, you can't go wrong. It's a tough choice. Yeah. Um, I got to play both of them, finger picking and flat picking. I think that my preference changes when the picking style changes, but we want you to hear them first and then tell you what we think on the other end. Let's do it.
All right, so there you have it, Cooper demoing these two things. So you said right before we went to the demo that you had a preference depending upon if you were finger picking and flat picking. Yeah. So flat picking winner is? This guy right here. I'm going to go with the 517 on flat picking and probably finger picking on the J45, and I'll tell you why. There's only two guitars here. Well, I mean, I'm still thinking about those other ones that are playing <laughs> on the today. Um, so here's the thing. I feel like I started off J45 and I was finger picking it and it just gave me that warm and fuzzy, mm -hmm. nice little quilt that your grandma made you kind of vibe um, that I really enjoy. That is what reminds me of why I like the J45 mm -hmm. because we never have them. So I need a quick reminder yeah. every time I play one. Oh, this is why I like it. And then when I picked up the pick on it, I still loved it. It felt great. And I was you know something about it i don't know if it came across in, in the demo it felt like it did not change the dynamics that much between when i was finger picking pretty heavily to the pick obviously yes there's a volume change but it it was this thing where i really liked how it felt finger picking when i picked up the pick i was like yep we're still going conversely over here i was finger picking it it felt good it didn't have that same warmth but then when i picked up the pick it filled out so much for me um, that it it's almost like it takes that sound but does put that Taylor filter of mm -hmm. the clarity and the brightness much clearer guitar and it's it's weird to say that because construction wise they should sound a lot more similar than I think they actually do but with the pick it just felt really nice and clear and like ready to go like you were talking about with a recording or performance or something like that. I just think it reacted to the pick a little bit more to my liking. What do you think? Um, my feelings about the guitars mirror yours pretty closely. Um, I like finger picking on this guitar. I I really like taking a J45 and dropping it down to like drop D or open D flat and playing some cutting or a, what is that song like a <sighs> like the butcher floor blues and that kind of yeah. stuff, you know. I I just I really really like the sound you get. I've long described a Gibson sound as like lo-fi, and that's because and it's not all of their models, but a J45 in particular, um, an old an LG one. Mm -hmm. It's to be this way, right? There's this kind of thumpiness that you get, particularly on the low end. And sometimes it, that's at the cost of the, the treble, okay? But it's okay. It's like if you ever listen to Chris Stapleton strumming away a simple song on that like kind of cobbled together LG one that he's got, it's that sound. Yeah. You know, JD, J45s to me accomplish that with a bit more volume and I really, really like the tone. Um, and I like it with a pick if that's kind of what I'm going for. Um, which is more of a slower dirge of a sound, really. Yeah. I just it's it's comfortable, um, it's it's familiar. I really yeah. like it. But yeah, the the five seventeen on the other hand, it plays faster. It does play faster. It's a bit more versatile. Yeah, and I it feels better to me. I, mostly, be, well, because one, I prefer the the nut with yeah. on it, but I also prefer the the finish on yeah. the guitar to this. This is the satin that changed everybody's mind about satin being a premier yes. feature. You know, yeah. this is the nicest satin that I think you can get. Um, yeah, it's just something special. About and this builders. is gloss it's nitro. Different. And gloss nitro, um, it, it has great aspects to it, but when it's new, um, it tends to be sticky. You know, and anybody who's ever owned like a Les Paul and played on a stage under hot lights for any period of time will tell you, <laughs> yeah. like, it kind of gets sticky. And so what's great is over the life of this guitar, this nitro, uh, well, I should say what's great. It depends upon how you feel about it. I think it's great. The nitro is going to change. Uh, over the years, it's going to like kind of sink into the wood. It's going to become one with the instrument, but it's also more delicate and it also can react to things. And it's also stickier. So, you know, it's it's kind of, you, you pick your poison. It's got its, its pros and cons. Um, and so I wouldn't want a J45 that wasn't like nitro finished. Yeah. But I, I played some of the vintage ones where it's kind of that knocked down and I really 
dig that because it's closer to like that. It's like a semi-gloss. So, you know, if I'm nitpicky, that's what it is. But yeah, I, I like this for, for certain things and I like that for certain things. And, and there's the rub. That's the issue, right? Yeah, I think that most players that have a hardcore personality and style and sound are going to be totally divided. I like, I think both of us like to switch it up and mm-hmm. kind of keep our minds open. Most people that want the round shoulder spruce mahogany sound, they're going to be like, they want the, the workhorse J45. But I think for a different kind of player that wants a little bit of that flavor, 517 is going to change some people, you know. And given our sales history, it seems to be changing a lot of minds. There's a lot of people opting for 517s. Yeah, so. for sure. Of course, it could be because these aren't in stock, but I digress. Who's to say? <laughs> so at the end of the day, both fantastic guitars. There's a reason this has continued to be in production for so long. It's still a phenomenal guitar. But hey, Taylor's coming out with some cool stuff hot in the heels, and uh, that's no slouch. So. And a little just sneak peek and maybe like a riddle of sorts. Um, I'm ready for this. Ask yourself, what does it look like? What does it sound like if Taylor tried to make of J45. And then remember that we went went to the catch event this year and we're waiting on something cool and maybe it's even better than both of these who is to say but watch out and turn your notifications on because there's an answer to that question coming soon. He's saying you should subscribe to the channel. Take a look. And turn on notifications and like our videos. And then you might see some very cool stuff coming. And then you're going to want to go to alamomusic.com because that's where you find both of these. Now, you see we have both of these in the store. Yes. One of them's got a buy button. One does not. This one does not. You're going to say in-store purchase only or call for pricing because that's how the world works. We've got it. So make the call or chat with us. Ask us because then we can get it to you. Yeah. Things change. We'll see what's up. So, anyways, yeah. So, I'd also like you to say in the comments below which one of these guitars you would prefer, uh, because I'd be interested to hear. Do you do you want the J45 because it's such an amazing guitar, because of its history, uh, because of its its reputation, all of the above, or are you saying you know no, I'm gonna go with the 517. You want both? You want neither? I'd love to hear the opinions below. So, let us, <coughs> excuse me. Let us know in the comments. And keep coming back for more. We will keep making videos. And we will see you next time.